All right, we are back with the walkthrough of the Scripps tutorial, and we're about to do uh, tutorial step number one. It's called Game UI and Basic Scripting. Uh, I haven't done this in several years, uh, so I'm just kind of going to learn it along with you. It says, Welcome to Scripps. This tutorial will help you learn the basic game concepts step by step. You can take it later, but we strongly advise you to do it now before you start a real game. Scripts is a game for programmers. If you don't know how to code in JavaScript, uh, check out this free interactive course. So yeah, if you haven't done any JavaScript programming before, uh, you're gonna wanna do like a basic tutorial first, uh, cause you wanna know at least like if statements, variables, uh, functions, uh, just your basic everyday programming concepts, you should at least moderately understand them first. Okay, remember if you accidentally close a hint window in the tutorial, you can always open it again. It's great. All right, let's begin. This is a playing field called a room. In the real game, rooms are connected to other ones. Uh, but in the simulation, we've just got this one room. And at the center here, uh, labeled spawn one, that is our, our spawn, which is what creates our creeps. Yeah, so the great thing about Scripts is that you can play it completely in browser. Uh, you can even write your code in the browser. Uh, so to do that, you can go down here and uh, click the console tab. And then this is just like if you've ever done inspect element in uh, Chrome or Firefox, uh, it brings up uh, a console window like this. And you can just type in JavaScript here and it will do, uh, it'll execute that JavaScript. It's really easy and straightforward. Uh, so what's simple JavaScript? It's console.log test. And so then your command returns a response in the console window, just like you would expect. Uh, so your spawn creates units called creeps. Uh, and to do that, we call the spawn creep method on your spawn object. Uh, so that sounds a little complicated, uh, but it's really straightforward once you get your head wrapped around it. Uh, so in this step here, what they want us to do is create a worker creep. Um, and we do that by calling spawn creep, and we just need to define what the body composition of this creep looks like. And then we're also going to give it a name, uh, so with this code here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. And then in the console here, I'll paste it, hit enter and it'll run. Um, so this function call, it returned zero, uh, which means it was successful. And then you can see our spawn is creating the creep and there it just popped out. So we now have a creep with the name harvester1. So you can see all the characteristics of your creep um, by using the view action. All right, so we're gonna hide the editor panel you can also just click this minimize button down here. And then what they're talking about is if you select your creep over here on the right hand side, that's gonna give you all the details uh, about what you just selected. Um, so here we can see the owner of this creep is me, player one. And you can see right below is its name. Uh, and the, its position is right there and then the amount of hit points it has and then also its fatigue. Um, and then the body composition down here, we said we wanted a work part, a carry part, and a move part. Um, and those are represented here. All right, but in the tutorial, uh, they want us to put the script to work. It wants us to uh, go to this energy source right here. Um, like I explained in the first video, the main objective in scripts is to uh, really mine as much energy as possible because that's what's going to make your colony run. So like it's saying here, we don't want to execute all of our commands in the console. Uh, what we really want to do is write a script that will execute um, throughout the game uh, so we don't have to sit here and type in code to play. So I'll open up the script box here. And this is where we're going to write our scripts. All right, and here they're talking about um, it's going to execute once for each tick in the game loop. Uh, and this is really the key concept behind scripts, and it applies to a lot of video game development. Um, the code that you write in here, it's going to execute 
you know, from top to bottom all the way through. And it's going to do that once for every tick of the game. Uh, so in Screeps, those ticks are pretty slow. It's two or three seconds uh, for a single tick. Um, but everyone who's playing the game uh, is basically limited by this same tick count. Uh, so when you execute a group of commands in one tick, another player is also executing uh, in the same tick so that nobody can do more commands than another player at a time. Uh, so right off the bat here, they give us quite a bit of code uh, to make our creep go and find the source and harvest it. Um, so the harvest method, that's what actually harvests energy out of the source, but you can only do that when the creep is sitting right next to it. So we need to get over there first. Um, and to get over there, we call the move to method. Uh, so that's right here. And of course, before we can harvest the source or move to the source, we also need to get the source object, which is what we're doing here. And we need to identify what creep we're going to give these commands to. So that's what that first line is here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and copy this code. And paste it down below. And you notice nothing happens yet um, because you need to, after you make a change to your code, you need to save it or commit it, if you're familiar with that terminology. So you do that with this check mark over here uh, to the left of your code. And once we do that, you can see our creep is on its way to move to the source. And when it gets there, it's going to start harvesting energy. Uh, so what this dialog is telling you is that as your creep gathers energy, the yellow dot in the center of it is going to grow larger, uh, and that's to indicate how much energy it's carrying. You can also see that over here on the right exactly how much it's carrying. So you can see each tick, it's, it's mining two more units of energy. And it's going to do that until it reaches 50, um, because 50 is the maximum amount that it can carry, because it has only one carry part, and one carry part has a load of 50 units. All right, so we're on our next step. Our creep has mined some energy, harvested some energy, but we need to bring it back to the, the spawn so that we can create more creeps. Um, so to do that, once we're full, the creep will uh, first need to move back to the spawn, and then it can use the transfer method uh, to transfer its its energy over to that spawn. Uh, so again, I'll go ahead and copy this code. I'll just select it all. Replace all of the code that was already there. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll walk you through each one of these lines of code. Um, so here we're getting a, a reference to the creep. Uh, there's a game object, a global object in Screeps that contains a lot of the data that we need access to. And in there, there is a dictionary. I call it dictionary because I'm a Python programmer primarily. Um, there's one called creeps, uh, and it's the key is the name of the creep that we want to get. And when we access that, it returns our creep object. And so our creep object has access to a lot of information like how much it's carrying. So this line here is the amount of energy it's carrying. And then the creep carry capacity is how much it can carry. So as long as we're not full, our creep isn't full on energy, uh, we want to go to the source. And if we're at the source, we want to harvest energy. So that's what this section of code is doing here. Uh, but if our creep is full, we'll go into the else statement. Um, and then we're going to try to transfer the energy to the spawn, which is our building right here in the middle of the game. Middle of the room, I should say. Uh, but if we're not in range, we're going to get this error not in range response back from the transfer uh, method call. So if we're not in range, we first want to move to the spawn. And so that's what we're doing right here. And so when we commit this code, you'll see that we now have a, uh, a fully functioning little ant farm here. Our creep will continuously go mine energy from the, the source. When it's full, it'll drop it back off at the spawn. And then it'll continue on like that um, forever, as long as our code is running. So great, uh, this creep 
will not work as a harvester until it dies. Oh yes, so creeps do not live forever. They live for 1,500 game ticks. And after that, it'll die and we'll need to create a new one. Um, so in this example here, or these instructions here, they want you to create a, another creep. That way you can harvest energy faster. Uh, so this is code again they want us to execute just right in the console. And the key here is that we have a different name on this creep. If we called this one harvester1 also, um, there would be an error from spawn creep. It wouldn't let us do it. So I've called it, and you can see this white line going around the spawn. That's indicating how long it's taking to create our new creep. Okay, our second creep is ready, but it's not going to move uh, because our code, we haven't told it to move. So to do that, instead of referencing just one creep individually, uh, we're going to create a loop that goes through all of our creeps and basically tells them to execute the same code that our first creep was running. So I copy that, go back over to my script, paste it all in. You can see here we're using a for loop now to uh, loop over the creeps uh, that we own. Then we make a nice easy reference to it right there. And then we just execute the same code uh, that we were running before. So let's commit that. And now our second creep is off to the source to harvest energy. All right, so now let's improve our code by taking the worker's behavior into a separate module. All right, so right off the bat, tutorial number one, uh, they're teaching us how to split our code into multiple files. Um, and this is something you're gonna wanna do because the code gets large very fast and you wanna stay organized. And one of the best ways to do that is to split your code into different files. So they want us to create a roll.harvester module and then we're going to put the code within it uh, that runs our harvester our, our creeps, because most of our creeps are harvesters right now. So to do that, we go over to this left panel here, new module name, roll.harvester. I can just hit enter, it creates our new file, it gives you some handy instructions here on how this works. I'm gonna replace this code with the code they gave me. Um, so what they're doing here is they're taking um, all the code we had, we're putting it in a function called run. Run is being contained in this, this harvester object. And then we're exporting that at the bottom. So let's save that. Okay, now we can go back to our main, the main game loop and update it to use our code that's in the, uh, the harvester module file. Got it. Go back to main place all of our code. And I can see this first line here, roll harvester. It's uh, importing a reference to what we exported in the roll harvester file at the bottom. And we do that outside the game loop. And then inside the game loop, the function that runs once per tick, um, we're again looping over all of our creeps, getting, getting an easy reference to our creep. And then we can just call the run uh, function and pass in our creep. So you can see how it goes from here. Our creep goes over to this code here. The creep is a parameter in this function and then it executes this code. All right, let's uh, commit all that. Okay, that's much better now. Um, so what this allows you to do is it allows you to create different roles for different types of creeps and that's gonna be really handy in the future. And that's it. For step number one in the tutorial, uh, that moved a little bit faster than I was expecting, but hopefully you were able to keep up with it. And uh, in the next video, we'll go to step number two, upgrading your controller.